So we're asked to determine the horizontal and vertical components of force that the pins at A, B and C exert on the frame. The cylinder has a mass of 80 kilograms and the pulley has a radius of 0.1 kilograms. So this is a machine um, and it's going to need to be analysed by taking the different components apart at the pins um, and looking at each of those uh, individually. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is try and work out the tension that occurs in this rope um, because that's going to be applying a force then onto my two different members. Okay, so that's my starting point. So if I draw the free body diagram of the mass. So this is what it looks like. So this mass obviously has a weight that's going to be acting downwards and we can calculate it as being the mass multiplied by gravity and holding it up is the tension in the rope which I'm going to call T. So knowing that this is an equilibrium the sum of the forces in the y direction have to be zero so we're going to have T minus the weight of the block is equal to zero so therefore T is going to have to m equal mg for it to be an equilibrium and we're told that the mass is 80 kilograms so we end up with a tension of approximately 784 newtons in that rope. So now I can move on to drawing the free body diagrams of the actual members that make up this um, structure. So I've given this point on the end here um, another name called E. So I'm going to start with drawing the member um, BE. Okay. So pulling it out on its own, it's a horizontal member. So the force, first force that I'm going to apply to it is going to be the tension force within the rope on the end here. So we've just worked out that all the way through this rope, we should be experiencing a tension of 784. So that goes on the end. Next, I'm going to need to start disconnecting at some pins. So I'll start with disconnecting at point C here. Okay, now we know a pin has a horizontal and a vertical component of the force. So I need to make a guess on what directions these are going to go. So let me first guess that this is going to go downwards, just to counteract this one. So I'll call it CY. And I need to make a guess on the direction of it um, horizontally. I'm going to guess it's going to go this way. So that's going to be CX. We're then going to need to disconnect from the wall out here at B. Again, we may need to make a guess on what the directions are. So I'm going to guess that this one is this way. And I'm going to guess upwards. Okay. Now, if we get the, any of these wrong, um, we know that we just need to, um, we'll, it will come out negative um, when we solve the maths. And we just need to flip over the arrow. So that's the first free body diagram. Now let's move on to drawing the second one um, of the member in here, which I'll call AD. Yeah, let me draw it out here. And it's also got that little pulley thing on the end, which I'm not going to separate off from it. Okay, so I think the first easy thing that we can put onto this free body diagram is um, what happens when we disconnect at these pins. So when we disconnect down here at A, it's against the wall. So we're going to again need to make a guess on what directions these go in. I'm just going to go with this. So AX and AY. We're then disconnecting at the pin at C in here. So the forces at C on the two different members that join there need to be equal and opposite. So if I've assumed CY going down here, it needs to be going up on the other one. And if I assume it going to the right here, it needs to be going back to the left. So this is Newton's third law, where every action has an equal and opposite reaction. All right, so now what I need to do is look at what's happening on the end here with the pulley. And if we look at this picture, we can see that the rope is like pulling down on both sides of the pulley. So we're going to have a force down here and a force down here. And again, the tension in the rope is the same the whole way through. So it's still going to be 784 newtons, oop, four, on both sides. 
So that there completes the two free body diagrams um, that we need to now go ahead and solve for things off. So we're looking for all the different unknowns. So we've got AX and AY, we've got BX and BY, and we've got CX and CY, which actually appear on both of my different diagrams. All right, so we have our three equilibrium equations that we can apply. Um, and I think where I'm going to start with this is I'm going to look at the first free body diagram that we drew. And if I go ahead and sum my moments at point B here, what I should be able to solve for is CY. Okay, so that's going to be my starting point. I'm going to also assume anti-clockwise is the positive direction. So BX and BY act through my point of interest at B, so they're not going to appear in the equation. So I'll move over to the next forces. So the next one I'll consider is CY. And it's going to be acting at a distance in here um, from its line of action. And if I scroll back up, we should be able to read it off the diagram. It is in fact this one meter. And this component is going to try and rotate us in a clockwise direction. So it's going to be negative. If we then look at CX in here, um, we can see that its line of action, if you dotted it back, would in fact end up going through point B, which means that it's not going to create a moment, so we don't need to put it in the equation. The last one that we need to consider is the 784 on the end. It's going to be acting at the full length of this member, which again, if we scroll up, we can read off the diagram. The full length in here is going to be 1.7 meters. And this is going to try and rotate the thing anti-clockwise, so it's positive. So CY can be solved. It comes out to be approximately 1333 newtons. So that's one of our answers. So this has come out to be positive, which means that we drew the correct direction on the diagram. So we can go back and label or you know, update our free body diagrams for everywhere we see CY. So this one here is 1333. Three, three. And same thing, this is 1333. Three, three. Okay. All right, so the next variable that I'm going to go for is by. Um, simply because if I sum now in the y direction, I should be able to find it out directly. So going up is by. Going down is this 1333 three, three that we just worked out. And we also have the 784 on the end. So doing this, BY comes out to be 549 newtons. Again, it comes out positive, which means the direction was correct. So this becomes 549. All right, so if we try and um, do anything more off this diagram now, what we're going to find is that basically all we can determine is that this component, BX, has to be equal to CX. And we get that just from summing in the X direction. So unfortunately, that's not really that useful to us. Um, like it is useful to know they're equal to each other, but we want to put a number around it. So now I'm going to move on to looking at this other diagram. And from this one, we should be able to determine CX. Okay. So now that we know that CY is 1333 three, three newtons, if we go ahead and sum moments about point A, what we should find is that CX is the only unknown that appears in the equation. Okay, remembering that this point here is A. So let's go ahead and do that. So AX and AY act through the point, so they're not going to be included in the equation. So the next one I'm going to include is CX. And it needs to be multiplied by the distance from its line of action back to point A. And if we scroll up, um, we're actually given that distance. It's this one in here of 0 0.5 meters. Um, and the direction that it's going to cause, it's going to rotate this thing anti-clockwise, so it's going to be positive. The next one I'll consider is CY, and we now know it to be 1333 newtons. We need to multiply it by the distance, which is this distance in here, to the line of action. Again, if we scroll up, it corresponds to this one meter. Okay. The direction for this part this is going to try and pull us anti-clockwise, so it's going to be positive. Alright, so the next one I need to consider is the 784 newtons. 
I need to multiply by the distance of it back to point A. And if we go up here, all right, so we know that the total distance from here all the way across to here, uh, sorry, to here, is going to be the 1.7 meters. Okay, so that's the force um, up to here, which is what we're looking for. So we can put that in. Okay, the distance, uh, sorry, the direction about point A, this is going to rotate the thing clockwise, so it's going to be negative. We've then got the second 784 newtons that we need to consider, and this is going to have some extra distance of, on the end. So if we go back up, we know that this distance in here is this 1.7 meters, but they're then going to have to add on this extra little bit because we're looking at the force here. Okay, so we're told that the radius is 0.1 meters for the pulley. So each of these little parts in here is 0 0.1 meters. So it's going to be 1.7 plus 0.1 plus 0.1. So the total there is 1.9 meters. Last of all is the direction. So this is going to try and rotate again um, clockwise. So it goes in as negative. So we can simplify um, this equation out, remembering it's equal to zero on the other side. Cx is the only unknown, and it comes to be about 2979 newtons. Okay. Again, it comes out positive, which means the direction was correct. So we can go and label it everywhere, everywhere that we see um, Cx on our diagrams. So here, it's 2979, and also over here. All right, so we have a few more things to find. Um, I'll go with AX and AY next. So if I go and consider what's happening in the X direction, I should be able to find AX. So I'm going to get AX in the positive X direction. This is drawn in the negative X direction, so it's minus. Oh, drop the Newtons. Um, there's nothing else in the X direction. So AX just becomes 2979 Newtons. Okay, and if we now go for the y direction on this diagram, we've got ay going up, we've got this going up, and we have two 784s going down. So we should be able to work out ay, and this comes out to be 235 newtons. So let's mark that in. So the only one that we need to determine now is BX. It's the only one left. So if we go back to our free body diagram over here, before we were in the situation where we didn't have enough information to be able to determine BX from it, but now because we've um, managed to determine CX from this other diagram, we do have enough information. So all we need to do is sum forces in the x direction to be zero. So from that, we've got bx in the negative x direction, and we have, this is the only other force in the x direction, 2979. So bx becomes this. Again, it's positive, which means that I guessed the direction correctly to begin with. And I'll conclude it by scrolling back up and just popping this in. And that concludes um, our question. So they're all the different answers um, that we were asked to find. So hopefully you can see that these frames and machines questions are a little bit of um, drawing of free body diagrams and then jumping between um, in order to determine all the different unknowns using your equilibrium equations. So that's all there is for this question and I'll see you in another video.